Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to get our worship right. Teach us that it's not so much as the place that we worship as it is the who we worship that is important. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Matthew's chapter 4, verse 8 through 11, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's Matthew's chapter 4, verse 8 through 11. Verse 8 reads, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Our subject for today is uh, no glory without suffering. No glory without suffering. And this is the third uh, temptation of Satan of Jesus in the wilderness. Now, the three temptations that Satan presented to Jesus are the same temptations that he presents to us, and they have three distinct questions concerning the relationship between Jesus and God, uh, his Father. The three temptations are the same that we are presented to in life. Uh, the three temptations were uh, concerning God's provisions, God's protection, and God's presence. That's God's provision, protection, and presence. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, Satan tests uh, first temptation concerned turning stones into bread. And since Jesus had been on an extensive fast, he was hungry. So to prove that uh, God would feed him like he did Israel, in the wilderness that uh, he was still bred in a starving land. And then Satan took Jesus in the second temptation to the holy city of Jerusalem and set him up on the pinnacle of the temple. This temptation was to demonstrate that God would keep Jesus from all hurt, harm, and danger. Now, this week, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Might I point out that this is one of the, the one of the most craftiest temptations that Jesus is Jesus that Satan uses on us because he's always trying to get us to a place where we are unknowingly worshiping him. Now, this temptation was the test of God's presence. Where God was, there was his glory also. Satan was aware that God was not willing to share his glory with him and that Satan was willing to try and overthrow God's kingdom and make it his own was well known. Now, this realm did not technically uh, belong to the devil. You can see Daniel chapter 4, verse 32, more on that. And we might talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, uh, who owns humans' hearts only as an usurper, a usurper. That's, 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 that's what Satan is, a usurper. A usurper uh, was one who attempted to illegally take control of sovereign power to try and take uh, by force that that doesn't belong to him. Now, much like former President Trump attempted when he lost the presidency to Joe Biden, and uh, Trump is still trying to usurp uh, the power of the presidency. Jesus cited Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16, which refers to how the Israelites had tested God at Massa. 
uh, by refusing to accept that God was among them until he wrought a sign for them. And, and that's Exodus uh, chapter 17, verse 7, that reads, And he called the name of the place Massa, and, or and, uh, Meribah, because of the siding of the children of Israel, the grumbling of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, is not the Lord among us or not? Is he with us or not? Uh, now, an ex excellent example of uh, pride lifting us up to where we can't, where we can't keep ourselves from falling, is the fourth chapter of Daniel concerning Nebuchadnezzar. Let's read some of that. Uh, Daniel chapter four, verse thirty to thirty-four. And this is the King James ver Version. The king spake and said, uh, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? In other words, my glory. While the words were in the king's mouth, Nebuchadnezzar's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee is the it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Now, if Nebuchadnezzar was in control, he could have kept the kingdom, but he was not in control. God spoke and declared to him, the kingdom had departed from him. Verse 32 says, and they, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomever he will. Verse 33 says, The same hour was the, the, the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And when he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like claws, like bird claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and mine understanding returned unto me. In other words, I acknowledged that God is God all by himself. Then my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Uh, let's get back to the text today. The devil offered Jesus a shortcut, a shortcut to his kingdom. But Jesus knew that he would suffer and die before he entered into his glory. Uh, you can read that a couple of verses on that is Luke chapter 24, verse 26, and 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11, and uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. Now let's look at uh, just uh, a little bit. Let's look at uh, some verses in uh, Luke uh, chapter 24. We'll start with verse uh, 13. Luke chapter 24, verse 13. It reads, That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you're having uh, uh, with each other uh, as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. And then one of them uh, named Cleophas answered Jesus saying, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, 
What things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man, man who was a prophet, mighty in deeds and words before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But he, but, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, beside all this, it is now the third day since they, these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And here it is, here it is. Was not it was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Here's a good place to remind us: no cross, no crown, no suffering, no glory. If Jesus had bowed down and worshiped Satan just once, and this is the force of the Greek verb, he could enjoy all the glory without enduring the suffering. That's the, the, the indication what Satan is trying to uh, subtly uh, tell Jesus. If he just bowed down once was the consequences then but but that he would in essence lose all of his glory Jesus would if he just bowed down once and worshiped satan now satan has always wanted worshipers because satan has always wanted to be god you can check out uh, more about that in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 through 14 now worshiping the creature instead of the creator is the lie that rules our world today, according to Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through and 25. Let's read that. Romans chapter 1, verse 24 says, Therefore God gave them up to the lust of their hearts, to impurities, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Why? Because they exchanged the truth about God for lies and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Now there's no shortcut to the will of God. If we want to share in the glory, we must also share in the suffering. First Peter chapter five, verse 10 says, but the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ. After that, ye have suffered a while. You don't get to the glory until you have suffered a while. Not forever, but a while. And, and, and this suffering is to make you perfect, to establish you, to strengthen you, and to settle you. And then uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 12 uh, reminds us to embrace our periods of suffering. Embrace suffering instead of running from it. And that's what we see Jesus doing. As the prince of this world, Satan offers, offers these kingdoms to Christ. But Jesus did not need Satan's offers. And we don't need his offers either but so often we go for it. We should always turn down Satan's offers because he can offer, but he has nothing to truly give. Psalms 24 and one said, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, 
the world and they that dwell therein. The Father has already promised Jesus the kingdom. And since we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, one day we will inherit all that God has promised. Our Lord's replied with Deuteronomy 6 and 13, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. Satan had said nothing about serve, but Jesus knew that uh, whatever we worship, we will serve. If we worship our money, if we worship our job, if we worship our uh, spouses, if we worship our children, if we worship our house, whatever we worship, we'll serve it. And what we serve, we'll spend most of our time with. Maybe not physically spend the time with it, but mentally with our minds will always be on what we serve. And sometimes, most of the time, our mind is on me, on us. And so it is to, to self, possible to self-serve. We could translate Luke uh, chapter 4, verse 13. It says, and when the devil had ended every possible kind of temptation, he stood off from it, Jesus until a suitable season. Through, uh, through Peter, Satan again tempted Jesus to abandon the cross in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 through 23. And through the crowd that had been fed, Satan tempted Jesus to an easy kingdom in John chapter 6, verse 15. One victory never guarantees freedom from further temptation. Can I say that again? One victory never guarantees freedom from further temptations. If anything, each victory we experience only makes Satan try harder. On the old rugged cross, on a hill called Calvary, Jesus did his suffering. Not for what he had done, but for what we had, have done. And we got to learn to suffer for others. Jesus suffered. He hung, bled, and he died. And they took him down and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. And, and he was there all Friday night and all day Saturday and all Saturday night. But early woo, Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands. And he has all power right now, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he's the glory of the Father. No shortcuts, no worshipers of God's will. He's there legitimately. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your flawless plan for us to reach the heights of being your glory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. That's all I've got for today. I pray that God's word will bless your soul richly and that we will get more in line with who we're worshiping and, 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 and then in line with who we belong to and who we are and why we are here. Again, thank you for joining us and, and I pray that God's word will bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.